Hello there, this is Jenny from the Sewing Palace in Helena, Montana. I'm pleased to introduce to you our new Saturday sampler, Christmas Block of the Month. We just started this morning and it is featuring a pattern called Santa's Village. Uh, it's by Thimble Creek Quilts and it has a lovely patchwork of sampler blocks and then a center Santa. We have it up here on the right and then it has a really cute border that's all pieced made out of houses and trees. So what we're doing is we're doing a different block every month and I'm gonna show you the first block. Welcome. All right, let's talk about a few of the supplies that you'll need to start this quilting project. You'll need the pattern, which is Santa's Village. You'll also need a couple of notions. So here are a few of the notions that I keep in my sewing room. One of them is a rotary cutter. This can be used right or left-handed. It's an awesome rotary cutter from Quilter Select. I also have a marking pen that's called a friction pen. The marks go away with an iron. I have two specialty rulers that we're going to be using today. One of them is a block lock two and a half inch half square triangle. It's this little guy right here. It has a routered out edge on the inside and it locks right into your seam beautifully to square up your blocks. And then I have a specialty ruler called a flying geese block lock ruler. And the size on this one is a two inch by four inch finished. And we'll use that for our block one block. There are a couple other lovely notions that I um, would suggest. Other rotary mat and cutter and rulers. So this is a creative grids ruler. This is a pressing mat that is wool. So it's a woolly pressing mat. I have a cutting mat underneath that I'm gonna be using. And then for starch, I do a kind of a different mixture, which is a combination of two uh, starches that are out there on the market. One of them is Terriol Magic, which is the one in the white bottle, and one of them is Best Press. And Best Press comes scented or unscented. You can choose whatever you like. So I do a mixture of these two. I put in a third of a solution of this and two thirds of the Best Press, and I put it into a Mr. Bottle and then I've coined it Magic Press. So that is this little solution right here. And then you need a sewing machine. This is a Tula Pink sewing machine. It's a quilter's edition, and I have a quarter inch presser foot ready to go. I also have some cotton thread from Aurifil. So I've got all the supplies ready to start my project. All right, let's talk about fabrics for this quilt. So the quilt behind me is made out of traditional colors, creams, reds, greens, couple blues in here. The cabins are also have red roofs and gold, do uh, gold windows and doors and then there's also traditional tree colors. In the center is an applique Santa so you could use that. You could choose another applique or you could make another grouping of blocks which is two across and two down for a total of four and get some of those traditional colors pulled in and put that in the center other fabric choices, you could do something else. This is a really pretty print that has little candy canes all over it and bright kind of mod colors in it. And then all these beautiful colors to go along with that. And here is the first month's block in those colors there. So you could go with a more modern or a shabby chic look or the one that's right behind me is the traditional and this is our um, month one block. So. All right, let's get quilting. So we're on month one, page one, and this is our block. And let's talk about a couple of the units in the block. So the center square is just a solid square. It's a great place to put a focal piece of fabric, or you can keep it simple and plain. And then these units here, 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 and here are flying geese units. So there's four in the dark green, and then there's four in this, which is called a medium green. The rest of the units are half square triangles. So there's one, two, three, four in each corner. So four, eight, 12, and 16 of those. So I'm gonna show you a couple tricks for making those blocks. All right, let's get started with some tricks for making the blocks. The first thing that I wanna go over is half square triangle units. So there's a lot of them in this block. There's 16 of them, right? So the traditional way to make them is in the pattern. It's cutting a two and seven eighths inch square, and then you do it out of a light and a dark, you mark the diagonal from point to point, you sew on each side of the line, then you open it up and you should have a two and a half inch half square triangle. So you need to do that quite a few times out of this, you get two, so you need to do that eight different times if you wanna follow the pattern. But let me show you what I have up my sleeve for that. All right, here's my tricks for making half square triangles. My trick is make them a little bit bigger and then square them up using the block lock ruler. 
My other trick is make eight at a time. So I'm going to provide a link to this document in the video at the bottom, but this is an eight at a time half square triangle unit chart. And it is for block lock rulers, so we're going to end up making them a little bigger and squaring them up. It tells you all what to cut, so that'll be at the bottom of the video. So I'm going to tell you right now what I'm going to cut because I already followed the chart. You're going to grab your light and your dark that'll make up your half square triangle units, okay? So in this traditional colorway, it's going to be a cream and a green. I'm going to get those fabrics prepped with starch, so I'll use my magic press and I'll spray it generously but not too heavy and then I'll iron it so they have a little bit more body. Once I've done that I'm going to cut two squares that are six inches. Six inches, okay? So you're going to cut two squares that are six inches. You're then going to mark diagonally from point to point. So what I use for that is my friction pen. Hold All on. Right, I got my friction pen and now I have my two six inch squares. I actually have them laid right sides together so I can start sewing after I mark them. I'm going to mark diagonally from point to point. So I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to mark a line diagonally. It's going to intersect each of those points. I'll go and mark the other direction. And then I'm going to take to my sewing machine and sew. All right, we're going to sew on each side of the line going each direction. So I'm going to sew this way and then the other way. Here we go. Now I've sewn the two fabrics together, which were six inches, and now here comes the magic. I'm going to cut it apart diagonally two times in each direction. So one time this way, one time this way, I'm going to try not to touch my fabric and leave it as close to a square as possible, so I'm going to just scooch those together. This was six inches wide, so the center should be three. I'm going to go three this way, and then three this way. And I have half square triangles. There they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How cool is that? All right, we have our half square triangle. I laid it on my woolly mat. I have my dark side facing up. I'm gonna first press it to get it warm. Finger press it open. And then when you iron it, you don't wanna go back and forth with it. You just wanna press it nicely. I usually don't use starch at that point, and I have a nice half square triangle. I'm going to show you squaring it up next. All right, we have our half square triangle ready to be squared up. This is the dark fabric. I press the seam towards the dark. So if that seam is facing you and you can read the ruler, you will lock it in correctly every time. You're going to lock it in. Now this is a two and a half inch ruler. You can see it slides on the seam. If you were using a regular ruler to square this up, it would teeter-totter over this edge and you wouldn't be able to square it up as easily. So that's the beauty of a block lock ruler. You lock it into the seam and it stays right on that seam and it stays flat. Now I'm going to trim all the edges. So this is a two and a half inch block lock ruler and I'm going to trim exactly around it. This unit will finish at two inches because I have a quarter of an inch seam around the whole thing. So there it is. All right, so let's say you have a block lock ruler that doesn't measure two and a half. You can use another size. This is a three and a half. They come larger. But the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to lock that seam in. Again, you're going to be able to read the ruler. The seam's going to be facing you. You're going to lock it in. The first thing is trimming off just a little bit of fabric so it's nice and square. So I'm going to do that just on two sides, here and here. Now that you have a nice squared up side, you're going to slide this ruler to the correct measurement. So here is a two inch line. Here's a two and a quarter. Here's two and a half. So you slide to the correct measurement and then once you're on that measurement, you will then trim the other two sides. So that's how you use a block lock ruler that isn't the exact measurement. You slide it. All right, I just showed you tricks for making eight at a time half square triangles. One unit of six will make eight 
but you got to do that one more time so you have enough and you'll have a bunch of half square triangles. Let's talk about these next. These are flying geese. You're going to do one out of your dark and one out of your medium. So the traditional way to do that is in the pattern, I'm going to show you another trick. All right, I'm going to show you a trick for no waste flying geese. Like I said, the traditional is in the pattern, but I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. This is going to yield four at a time. You're going to cut a total of five pieces of fabric. One of them is going to be large, and that will grow up to be this um, goose unit, which is right here. And then you're going to cut four smaller units, and those will grow up to be the sky units. So we need to do this out of a medium green and a dark green. When you look at the chart, it tells you all different things to cut for different sizes. Our flying geese finish at two inches by four inches. They measure two and a half by four and a half, but they finish at two by four. So we're going to follow this line across. You cut four small squares at three and an eighth and one large square at five and a half. So again, you'll do that out of medium and you'll do it out of dark green. All right, I've got a medium green and a dark green, and then I have my background. I need to cut a five and a half of my medium green and a five and a half of my dark green. I have pre-starched these fabrics so they're nice and stable, and I'm gonna cut those at five and a half inches. So here's my cut. All right, per each of those, so I have a medium and a dark. I need three and an eighth inch squares out of my background. So four of each. And the quick way for me to do this would be two at a time. And I'm just gonna cut these up. All right, I've got my medium green that was cut and then four light uh, there. And I'm gonna lay these right sides together. They should overlap in the center like so. And then I'm gonna mark a diagonal line from point to point. Then I'm going to sew a quarter inch on each side of the line. I sewed on each side of the line. I'm then going to cut on my line right down the diagonal and then I will yield two pieces like this. I'm going to press it next and when you press it you're going to press this up so it looks like a heart. All right I will yield two of these pieces. I'm going to take one of them on each. I'm going to lay it right sides together. Line up this corner. Then you're going to mark from point to point with your friction pen and then you're going to sew on each side of the line. I couldn't see my line very well so I'm just going to mark it again. Now I'm ready to sew quarter inch on each side of the line. All right, I sewed on each side of the line. I'm now going to cut this apart on my marked line, which will yield two out of this half, and then I will yield two out of the other half, which we haven't finished sewing yet. Then we're gonna press this. So here is one flying geese unit. I'm gonna press that up towards the sky, or on this instant, instance, the cream. So I'm gonna press that, and then we'll square it up next. Now we're gonna square it up. This will yield four flying geese, and I've just showed you the no waste method. We're gonna use the block lock flying geese ruler, and it is a two inch by four inch finished. The cool thing about this ruler is it's routered out on each diagonal. They'll set right in the seam, so you have a perfect diagonal on those corners. You have a quarter inch reveal right here, and you have a perfect rectangle. So when you square this all up, you'll do those two sides and then the other two sides. This is a good project for a rotating cutting mat uh, so that you can rotate your mat. But then you have this perfect flying geese ruler. I missed one little spot and watch this will lock right black back in and you can cut right through that and get a beautiful flying geese unit. So those will sew together beautifully right, in your it. block. Now we got to put our whole block together. So you're going to have a unit of four uh, half square triangles. 
So when you sew those together, you'll want to do two at a time, so there and there. And then when you press those seams, if you press the seams in opposite directions, so this one's that way and this one's that way, when those go to be sewn together, the bulk of the seam will be spread out. So sometimes you may not be pressing towards the dark. So then after you sew that line, you'll have a unit that looks like this. And then that will repeat in every single corner to have those corners done. Then you're going to sew your geese together. So you'll square them up. And then when you square them up, you'll get those two pieces. You'll lay them right sides together and you'll sew a quarter of an inch. My tip here when you're sewing this is to actually flip it over and sew from this side because you can see your quarter inch reveal stitching. And when that gets pressed out, you'll have a perfect point if you don't sew over it. Then you've got these units. You'll sew a row here, a row here, like so, and a row there. The other fun thing about quilting is you do not have to follow the pattern. Look what else you can do. Wouldn't that be fun? Flip those around. What if you wanted these to point out? You can make your block look totally different. Granted, those were two sewn together, but play with your block and have fun creating. All right, thanks for joining me. This is Jenny from the Sewing Palace in Helena, Montana. Please like and subscribe to our channel because we'll po be posting a new video every month. This was month one. You can purchase the pattern here at the Sewing Palace, or you can join us in our class. We just started. Bye-bye now.